Today, we'll be looking at cranial nerve disorders. Cranial nerve disorders refer to an impairment of one of the 12 cranial nerves. And one way you can uh, memorize your cranial nerves is to attempt to draw a face. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to draw a face and I'm going to use the number one to represent the nose. Again, why am I using one on the nose? It's going to remind me that the cranial nerve one, the olfactory nerve deals with the sense of smell. So that's why I'm going to put one on the nose. Again, I'm going to draw the eyes. Okay, so we're trying to draw a face. So those are the two eyes. And I'm going to label them two. Okay, so why am I doing that? That's going to remind me that that's the optic nerve and it deals with vision. Okay, and then I'm going to draw the eyelashes okay just right above the eye and it looks like a number three even though it's turned the other way around so that's my cranial nerve three that's my oculomotor nerve and it serves the muscles of the eyes okay and then i'm going to put four just down on this on the inner aspect of the eyes again that's my trochlear nerve it powers the muscles of the eye that allows the eye to point downward and inward, okay? So that's why I put it on the lower aspect of the eyes and on the inward aspect. So it has a trochlear nerve, your cranial nerve four, and it powers the muscles that allows the eyes to point downward and inward. Okay, and then there's gonna be my cranial nerve five, okay? So my cranial nerve five is like one of the largest nerves of the face. So I'm gonna draw it this way. That's my trigeminal nerve. It innervates the face and the mouth. Uh, it helps with mastication or chewing. So that's my trigeminal nerve. You would have heard trigeminal neuralgia. Okay, so that's where it comes from. Trigeminal neuralgia is a chronic pain condition that affects the trigeminal nerve or our fifth cranial nerve. Remember, this nerve carries sensations from the face to the brain. So if your client has trigeminal neuralgia, even mild stimulation of the face, such as maybe they are brushing their mouth or they are putting on makeup, it might trigger a jolt of excruciating pain. So again, that's my trigeminal nerve. And then I'm going to have my sixth cranial nerve, which is my abductions nerve. Abductions, just like the name, abduction. So again, it helps control eye movement by abduction. So I'm going to put it on the lateral aspect of the eye. So that's my six over there. And that is my abductions nerve, my cranial nerve six. And I'm also going to have uh, my seventh cranial nerve. So I'm going to draw seven, kind of representing the sides of the face. So there's a very big seven there to represent the sides of the face. And that's my facial nerve. Again, represents the size of the face. That's my facial nerve. It deals with, it helps to innovate the muscles for facial expression, uh, uh, the sensation of test. So those are the two uh, vital innovation it does, okay? The facial expression and sensation of test. Again, you would have heard about uh, facial palsy or Bell's palsy. So that's where you have an involvement of the seventh cranial nerve, uh, nerve or our facial nerve. So in these clients with uh, Bell's palsy, you will see sudden weakness in the muscles on one side of the face. So that's my seventh cranial nerve. Again, I draw it on the side of the face and it reminds me that it innervates the face. It deals with facial expression, deals with sensation of test. And the next number would be eight. So I'm going to put a kind of ears on this face. Again, if I complete this, it kind of looks like an eight. That reminds me, remember where it is, almost like the ears. So again, that's my eighth cranial nerve, where the ears are. Again, what does this deal with? It deals with hearing, because it starts where the ear is. And again, it deals with balance. So most times you could have heard of acoustic neuroma. So this would be a benign tumor of the eighth cranial nerve. Remember your eighth cranial nerve deals with hearing and balance. So again, you want to think of it in terms of safety. There's a risk for fall in patients with uh, any involvement of the it's cranial nerve. Again, we're going to draw it like an ear and it reminds us that it deals with hearing, it deals with uh, balance. 
So again, that's my eighth cranial nerve or our acoustic nerve. It's also called the vestibular cochlear nerve. Okay, and then we're gonna have number nine, which I'm going to draw in the area where you should have the mouth. So that's kind of the mouth of this face. And that's my glossopharyngeal nerve. That's my glossopharyngeal nerve, glossopharyngeal, pharynx, pharyngeal, pharynx. So it, it serves the pharynx, helps with swallowing. It also innervates the posterior third of the tongue that deals with taste. So again, those are the two vital innervations, swallowing and the posterior third of the tongue. So that's your glossopharyngeal nerve. And then we're gonna have our 10th cranial nerve. So that's my number 10 there. And that's my vagus nerve, your vagus nerve. And it deals with sensations from your internal organs. It deals with sensation with the uh, parasympathetic motor regulation of those internal organs. Like it helps to regulate the heart rate. It helps to innovate the smooth muscles in the airway. So it manages your gag reflex and it innovates the smooth muscles in the lungs and the smooth muscles in the GI tract. So again, your vagus nerve helps with the parasympathetic regulation of visceral or internal organs, where we said it regulates the heart rate, it innervates the smooth muscles in the airway. So I'm already thinking of the gag reflex, uh, it innervates the lungs and the GI tract. And then I'm going to put 11, kind of give this guy some shoulders, kind of. So that's my 11, I'm going to put it on both sides. And that's my accessory or our spinal accessory nerve. And you can see where it is kind of on the shoulder. So it helps, uh, it innervates the muscles that help to move the head, move the neck and the shoulders. That's my 11th cranial nerve. And again, we're gonna have our 12th cranial nerve. So almost like this guy is sticking out his tongue and that's my cranial nerve 12. And it's called my hypoglossal nerves, the hypoglossal nerve. And it serves the muscles of the tongue, again, for swallowing, and for speech. So that's one way you want to memorize your cranial nerve. And this is what we try to do. So that's our olfactory nerve, number one. Your two would be optic nerve. Three would be our oculomotor nerve. Four would be in the inner aspect, help the eyes to look down and inward. That's our trochlear nerve. Five is our facial nerve. Six would be our abduction nerve. That's one is on the lateral aspect of the eye. Seven deals with our facial nerve. Again, we talked about facial palsy. Uh, we said um, uh, eight is our acoustic nerve. So we try to draw an ear. And that reminds us it has to do with hearing and balance. Again, if any patient has problems with our eighth cranial nerve, balance could be affected. They can fall. Again, you want to take note of that. Nine would be our glossopharyngeal nerve. Ten would be our vagus nerve. And we said it deals with regulating the heart rhythm elevating the smooth muscles in the airway. So you're already thinking, if there's any issue, you want to test uh, our vagus nerve by testing for a gag reflex to be sure it's uh, functioning as it should. Again, there's our 11, which we said is the shoulder, and it helps to elevate the muscles that move the head, the neck, and the shoulders. And um, 12 will be our hypoglossal nerve that elevates the muscles of the tongue. So you're looking at swallowing, and we're looking at speech. Okay, so let's run through some NCLEX style question to see how we could see any of these questions on the NCLEX. So again, there's a simple one. Damage to the seventh cranial nerve results in what? Again, I kind of remember seven, the big seven we drew just earlier on to represent the sides of the face. That's my facial nerve. Facial nerve is our cranial nerve seven. Again, if damage occurs, the client will experience facial pain. Again, when I think of absence of ability to smell. Remember we said one will represent the nose. So again, that would not be my cranial nerve. So this is wrong. Absence of eye movement. Remember we drew the eye and we drew four here. We said it helps the eye to look inward and uh, downward. So again, that would not be my cranial nerve seven. And with tinnitus, that has to do with the ear. So that would have been an involvement with the eighth cranial nerve. So again, that is wrong. Option A is my correct answer. Okay, so that's it right there. A client with otosclerosis is scheduled for a 
ectomy. Again, even if you don't know what it means, look at ectomy tells me they are cutting off a kind of a surgical intervention. So again, with otosclerosis, remember we have these three little bones in the ear, the malleus, the incus, and the steps. So again, I see the step, this has to do with the step being taken out. So in otosclerosis, the steps begins to fuse with the surrounding bone, okay? So that's what you see in the image right here. So the steps begin to fuse with the surrounding bone and they have to carry out this procedure because when it fuses, it's not able to uh, transmit waves. So you kind of see conductive hearing loss in this kind of patient. So we need to replace the steps with a titanium prosthesis. Okay, so now the question is, which finding suggests a complication involving the seventh cranial nerve? Again, seven, my facial nerve. Already see facial changes in facial sensation. So that's gotta be my answer. Because I know that diminished hearing could be expected in clients who undergo uh, surgical uh, pro uh, procedures related to the ear. Sensation of fullness could be an expected finding in this patient. Inability to move the tongue side to side. Remember we said the client will be sticking out his tongue. That's my cranial nerve 12 there. Okay, so that would be wrong. So my correct answer would be changes in facial sensation because my seventh cranial nerve is my facial nerve. A student nurse is observing a neurological nurse perform an assessment. When the nurse asks the client to stick out his tongue, the nurse is assessing the function of which cranial nerve. Again, that's my 12th cranial nerve there. Remember we said the client is sticking out his tongue and that's our 12th cranial nerve. So again, with optic nerve two, remember we drew the eyes of our uh, patient and we said that's our optic nerve two and it deals with visual function. Olfactory nerve one would be the nose. So we said that was going to be our nose. So again, that would not have to do with the tongue. Uh, the cranial nerve 10 would be our vagus nerve. Again, remember we kept saying it helps innervate uh, the heart rhythm. It helps with, uh, with uh, functions uh, with the gag reflex. So again, we said if you want to test for gag reflex, it helps you to assess the vagus nerve. So again, this would not be our... Um, answer right there. So this will be wrong. And option D would be our correct answer. So you can pass your vagus nerve there and all of the related nerves. Okay, the nurse is caring for a client with an acoustic neuroma. Acoustic, I remember we talked about um, our acoustic nerve where we said we'll kind of draw the ears. Again, if we make it up, it completes up and gives us an eight. That reminds us that that's our acoustic nerve. It deals with hearing. It deals with balance. So when I see neuroma, oma, oma tells me kind of a growth. So I know there is a kind of growth pressing on the cochlear nerve or our vestibular cochlear nerve. Again, there's a risk for fall there. Remember, we talked about this. There's a high risk for fall because the vestibular cochlear nerve deals with balance. So again, the location of this tumor warrants which of the following nursing diagnosis as highest priority. Safety is always going to be priority. And that's our answer right there. And finally, the nurse is performing a neurological assessment on a client with admitted with a transient ischemic attacks. Assessment findings reveals an absence of the gag reflex. The nurse suspects injury to what? Well, it won't be our hypoglossal nerve. Our hypoglossal nerve has to move with uh, deal with the tongue. So that wouldn't be our, uh, our right answer there. The vagus nerve, again, would be our correct answer. Again, to test for vagus nerve problem, you want to use a tongue blade and depress the back of the tongue to elicit a gag reflex. Another way to test for damage to the vagus nerve is to have the client say, ah, while observing for uniform rising of the uvula and the soft palate. So the absence of this reflex could indicate damage to the tenth cranial nerve. So again, that would be a good answer to hold on to. My glossal pharyngeal uh, would not be the right answer. It's not tested in this manner, inclusive of my facial nerve. So again, my correct answer would be option B.